Episode 4, Deathly Escape. It was midnight when the gates of the palace opened. The entire forest radiated with its ray of shine. A wild dog passing through the forest collapsed with the blinding light. A boy with a posture of a man, tall and with heavy musculature, stepped outside on the grass barefoot. He was a boy of 20 who looked 10 years older with his well-groomed body. Maybe he had inherited it from his knighted clan. Blake pulled down his round spectacles and looked at the moon with his deep blue eyes. It sparkled hunger. He had been facing insomnia for a few days. I shall ramble outside, Blake thought to himself. So, he covered a satin shawl around his upper body, lest the cold wind make him sick. As he walked towards the dense forest, he could recollect the saying of his father. Do not step out at night alone. You have no powers yet. Blake giggled and kept walking where the end took him. Half an hour had passed, and Blake kept walking through the forest. He liked solitude, being alone with the moon. Back home, even though the palace was so big, he would encounter uncomfortable mistresses at Marcus's door. Blake rolled his eyes and sat by a pond. He took a pebble and threw it in the water. The glistening water splashed a little. Just then, Blake heard a series of high-pitched gurgles. He turned back to see the bushes move a little. Something was there. He quickly got up and held a log of wood. The father's voice again repeated in his head. You have no powers yet. Do not step out at night. But now he was already out, in danger, with no help. Blake's body shivered when the moving bushes kept getting nearer. There, he saw a pair of yellow eyes shining at him. The sharp teeth were slimy, and it howled at him. Blake slowly walked back when he saw the wild hyena look at him with tongues out, as if to tell him, I will savor you tonight. Shit, Blake murmured and walked back. There was a point he could not walk back. The pawn halted him. What do I do? Blake thought to himself when he saw that he could not go back anymore. The hyena laughed at him as it walked towards him. The water kept dripping from its sharp teeth. Blake exhaled deeply and held the log tightly. Just then, the hyena jumped suddenly at him. Blake closed his eyes and shook the wood as hard as he could. When he opened his eyes, he could see the hyena lying beside a tree. He had hit it so hard that its head hit the banyan tree. Blake heaved a sigh of relief. I should leave as quickly as possible, he thought to himself. Just as he ran to escape, he heard the same high-pitched gurgles in huge numbers. Blake halted. He slowly turned back to see seven hyenas staring at him from the back. Fuck, he shouted. There was no way out. He had injured one of their packs. Blake would die today because there was no way out. Back in the hospital, Zanea rolled her eyes. If I was your mother, I would have snapped so bad. Lily laughed. <laughs> you are acting like a mother right now. Do you understand? At least listen to me. Listen to what I have to say. Zanea stood in front of Lily with an akimbo. Okay, tell me. Tell me what you have to say. Say. Lily got intimidated a little. All I am saying is that Marcus does not seem like the kind of guy you are talking about. He is really sexy, and... and why would he pay me in advance? He saved my father's life by paying for his bail in advance. I thought you were right the first time he offered me this. But now, it feels right. Zanea was a little tranquil now. She sat on the couch and pulled out her phone. Okay, tell me his full name. If he is that sexy, he should be on social media, right? Definitely. So, what's his name? Marcus, Lily responded. Zanea gave her a creepy look. Full name? Lily was quiet. I don't know. But he paid for my treatment. Here's the receipt. It should have his name. Yeah, here. It's Marcus Luna. Zanea laughed. <laughs> Luna? <laughs> Is he related to the moon? <laughs> Shut up and just look him up. 
As Zanea typed on her phone, she muttered, That is an uncanny name. I should be able to find him easily. Lily rolled her wheelchair closer to Zanea. She was eager to look at Marcus again. Zanea made a sad grimace. I can't find him. Lily snatched her phone. How is it possible? Everybody is on social media these days. Zanea exhaled. Lee, he is a prankster. Marcus Luna is a false name. No, it can't be. Zanea wiped her forehead. I will not let you do this with some strange man whose name is false. Lily became sad. Why was she this sad? Maybe she had pictured a fiery night with a fiery guy so much that she was actually looking forward to the romantic encounter. Zanea got up to snatch her phone. Just then, Lily shouted, and here he is! In the forest, Blake quivered in fear. He muffled his body with his arms. Please do not hurt me. He opened his mouth to howl, but he had no voice to do that. Unlike his family, Blake had no powers of his own yet. Two hyenas pranced at him with watery mouths. Just when Blake thought it was his last breath, something came in between. He opened his eyes to see a sinewy body of a man with a gigantic chest that picked up a hyena with just one hand. In front of him, they all looked like ants. He killed three of them by just stepping on their bodies. The rest ran away in fear. Blake kept gazing at the man that rescued him with so much alon. When all the hyenas had disappeared, the rescuer turned back. His red eyes shone brightly at Blake. His wolf-like hair flew in the air. Brother, are you all right? He asked in his husky voice. Blake ran to his elder brother. 